safety. And we want to use this show to kind of give those examples and highlight footage from your favorite battles and your favorite battle MC showing them uh, demonstrate these different um, skill sets that it takes for them to be successful. But um, before we get into that, you know, we want to kind of um, take people along the journey of battle rap and the MC battle culture and how we got to the point where we're at presently. So, you know, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Again, if you are watching and you're in the chat and we're saying things that you know already, remember, this is a show to educate new viewers. So we welcome everybody to stay in chat and engage and ask questions that you want me to ask Smack. But for the most part, this is basically to educate new viewers on the battle rap culture. All right. So let's get into it. I had to say that yeah. I had that disclaimer because you nah, know, nah, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, you know, because you know, we 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 just been doing this for so long. So, like, you know, what I'm saying when we take them back to the the, the, the original origin of, of 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 the history of battle rap, they might be like, "Yo, come on, looking at us crazy," because you know, what I'm saying we've been doing this for so many years, but um. This I'm going to definitely off. have to jump in every few minutes and be like, disclaimer. You know what I'm saying? For those who are just tuning in, you know what I'm saying? To give them the little reminder or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, yeah, let's get it started. But, like, you know, um, you know, for the new fans that, that, that this came around or that might be, like, you know what I mean, anticipating or logging on to the caffeine platform, URLTV.TV app, battle rap is a form of, 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 of expression in a rhymatic format where, you know, we have people that can actually express the way they feel in a rhymatic format that goes up against an opponent that also, you know what I mean, you know, basically they uh, go against or compete against them lyrically. Um, you know, they get into personals, you know, they get into like this different elements of just trying to basically expose the other person. It's just like a boxing match, but lyrically. It's just like a UFC fight, but lyrically. It's just like a basketball game, scoring points, but lyrically. You know, you got two people that's just trying to basically, like, you know what I mean, tell their stories against another person and actually doing it in a rhymatic format where it's like, you know, they just trying to actually just expose them the, 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 the best way they can, you know. Um, right. I think, you know, um, it, 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 it is a real, real dope, you know, um, art form because it gives people a chance to actually, you know, get their point across without getting physical most of the times. <laughs> but, um, you know, but yeah, it, it's, it's became a sport, though, you know, um, pretty much where, you know, people respect, you know, uh, the, 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 the craft and the skill set of, of these artists that can actually express themselves in a way where, you know what I mean? They could tell stories or they could just basically, you know, um, just tear apart their opponent lyrically. So, you know, everybody grown to start to love this art form. And, um, you know, it started like, it's always been around. Like it started like right. when, like, like, what would you say bees? Like, well, you know what I'm well, saying? Well. Well, battle rap in, in itself has been in existence since the beginning of hip hop. Like, hip hop like, is all based on competition. Uh, competition. Who's the best right. DJ? Who's the best break dancer? Who can put up the most graffiti? Who's the best rapper? So back then, you know, it was they they bat well, the way they battled was more so along the lines of who could rock a party better. So got right. MCs would have mics, they would control the crowd, the DJs would play the music. And guys right. basically battled in that kind of format where it wasn't really personalized and you weren't getting at your opponent. As you know, as we see in modern day battle rap, you were just kind of showing your skill. And it was up to the, you know, the crowd to decide who could keep the more who, excited who, and keep the show. Who could, going. Yeah, who could rock the crowd the most, who had the better flow, you know. Um, let me ask you a question though, Bees, because you know what I mean, we're gonna go back and forth. Like, you know what I mean? Um, what was the first battle that you known that you seen that you could you know familiarize yourself with like yo that was an ill battle like you know well there's you know there's battles on wax but probably the first battle yeah i'm talking about I on saw. wax let's start let's start with the wax because we're going to get into our modern day battle rap but right. i want to i want to i want to take it back to like i want to start on a wax first because you know 
before there was acapella battle rap of like the style of format that we actually know battle rap as being today, there was battles on wax. So I want to start there. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to talk about like Kumo D and, you know what I'm saying? LL. You know, LL and, you know what I'm saying? You know, MC Sham and, 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 and Karis One. And, you know, I want, I want to bring it back to those days. Like, what was the first battle that you seen that you felt like was was crazy that you really got like, you know what I mean, a hip hop culture and a frenzies where it's just like, yo, yeah, hip hop I mean, is where it's at. You know, when we was growing up, you know, like you would hear this stuff as kids, people weren't as crass as they are today. Like they weren't as direct, you know what I mean? So like you would say the smallest thing and everybody would be like, ooh, ooh. because the culture was based on you defending what you built. So if anybody challenged you, you had to battle it. I mean, so a lot of times on records and stuff like that, people would get challenged. You know, there would be the stars of that present era going against, you know, the guy, you know, other guys in the present era. A lot of times it would be subliminal. It wouldn't necessarily be very direct. I would say, like, really, like, believe it or not, like, you know, KRS One, you know, he's he kind of set it on MC Shan and made a career out of it from Boogie Down Productions, but like, if you just do your research, like I feel like Tupac was like one of the guys who like was very blunt and forward with his battles, like on Wax. Like he said your name, it was yeah. derogatory, it was disrespectful, Definitely. it was to the point, it was shocking when he did that. Like when he was going at Biggie and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think like those are like some of the earlier matches you know, that really kind of stuck out to me. And then, of course, like Jada Kiss and Beanie Siegel. I thought that was a crazy battle. You know, um, that really showed, like, skill. You know what I mean? That's what I think, that's what I think, like, um, like, where lyricism met battles on, like, a really high level. Because they had a new, they had a real back and forth battle, Beanie Siegel, from Rockefeller and, and um, J.D. Kiss. Like, their battle back and forth was intense. It was lyrical. They had flows. You know, it wasn't just, you know, 24 bars. Like, it wasn't just one line. It was like a serious attack of two of the most skilled lyricists, you know, probably in the game period and in history. And that was, like, um, one that really went back and forth. Of course, there was the game and Joe Budden. Um, you know, that elevator ride, y'all dead the beef. That was hard. <laughs> I remember yeah. bars from that battle, like you know what I'm saying. Nah, those are some dope battles. I think one that stuck out to me the most was uh Nas and Jay Z, the ether. Like, I think the ether right. was like one of the most impactful uh battle rap rhymes to ever, like, you know what I'm saying, bless the culture because you know what I'm saying, it was a song, and to this day, you know, people, you know, uh you know, refer to ether as like, you know what I mean? Y'all got that ether, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, you I, can't I, forget before that, you know, Jay-Z had the takeover. You know yeah, the I takeover, mean? yeah, yeah, the takeover. But Jay-Z didn't really, like, he just went in a, he didn't really write, like, for, for, for Nas, though. He just went in a free, nah, he just he went in the studio. Nah, he got him with when that's the one in every 10-year average, your lane. It all yeah, of that, like, con, he's getting con, that condom, nice. con, con, condoms in condoms in the in the back in yeah. the back of the baby seat. Yeah, he's you know going I mean? crazy. But like we say all this to say, like these are just different types of battles that were going on. And what was crazy about this time period, in um, in, in I, I won't say battle rap, but just in hip hop in general, it was a time when hip hop, re referring to lyricism, was at a high. And, and people were still exercising hip hop with the competitive nature. So guys were running around, I'm top five dead or alive, I'm the best and willing to prove it. Where in today's marketplace, you don't really see guys concerned with lyricism or proving that they're the best or willing to battle or go back and forth on wax. That, 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 that competitive spirit doesn't exist in hip hop anymore in, in, in terms of the mainstream recording artists. They're not really focused on lyricism anymore. It's more of a vibe, which is cool. And I'm not saying that that makes the music inferior. It's just a different time and place for it. But at this present time, 
you know, you have Jay-Z, who's like the biggest artist. Nas, who's like one of the biggest artists. And they're really going back and forth, demonstrating skills. So that was an impactful time for the culture. You know what I mean? It's, you know, you also had the locks going at 50, 50 Cent going at everybody. Fat Joe, you know, yeah. it, was, it was really a lot going on at that time. And that was around the time when we were doing a Smack DVD. And what was going on at that time is dudes were battling outside on the street, but you would battle because that was a way to get attention to get a record deal. So I might be skipping a few steps, but there were battles on beats. That's that like that's that was the traditional way that people battle. Battle rap was done on beats. The battles that you see presently today in the format with two MCs meet on stage and compete, that was done over beats. You know, that was kind of um, demonstrated in the movie Eight Mile. That's kind of how battles were. Battles were on beats. The structure wasn't the same as it is presently. And guys would, you know, you would get a beat and you'd have to flow and deliver your rhymes on that beat. And there were a lot of different, um, you know, organizations that were doing rhymes on beats. You had Jump Off TV. You had um, the New Music Seminar. You know, that was like a music seminar that took place every year. So people would come in and they would have a battle, MC battle, and dudes is battling on beats. So that was kind of the wave for a long time. You know what I mean? Dudes battling on beats. When it changed is when kind of like the Rockefeller era came around. Like, you know, when we first started doing the Smack DVD, that's when battles started changing when guys would just come outside and battle on the corner because you would just be rehearsing to get your rhymes up so that you could kind of spit them in the cypher. So the rhymes weren't really catered to the opponent. They were just slick talking rhymes for anybody. But guys would be outside battling all, you know, all through, especially like uptown, like through Harlem and stuff like that. Guys were battling. So, you know, um, I guess because a lot of times people would be outside and nobody's running around with a radio. So dudes is just rhyming a cappella, kicking in rhymes. And that's kind of like, <clears throat> what people would do because you could like see like producers like you know or like production companies like Rough Riders and like um Swizz Beats and stuff like that those guys would come around so if you was nice at rapping on the corner they would take you into a studio and put you you know put you in the booth and see what they can make out of you as an artist whereas right. today you know you got to have your record on the radio or on the playlist or on Spotify or Apple Music you know, and you don't really, you could make music in your bedroom and email it on SoundCloud and it could pick up and take off. But back right. then, you know, you know you back then there was no internet either. That's right. why, you know right. I mean? All those platforms that you name and didn't even exist. So like right. the only way you could actually, you know, showcase your talent is on the street corner and hoping that you could make a name for yourself and, you know, somebody will hear about you and then, you know, people come looking for you and trying to like, you know what I mean? See what you're really about. But yeah. And a lot definitely. of guys' names traveled that way. <clears throat> but, but amazingly enough, like years before, like I saw goods in a battle, you know what I mean? Over beats, you know what I mean? But like way before, like I ever would know who he was, I didn't meet him again, maybe till 10 years later. You know what I mean? When the battle scene really started to erupt. You know, but guys, and it, and, and it was a beat. It was a record store on 125th Street called HMV, which was like a big national um, record store chain. It was like a really nice store. It was like Best Buy without electronics. And um, there was an MC battle there, and Goods was in the battle. There was this other guy named Shells that was in the battle. And there was a lot of guys that were making their names around the city. You know, T-Rex being one of them. He was actually the most popular guy at that time. And it was T-Rex, there was J-Mills, there was Shells, there was Paradise, there was Den 10. There was a lot of guys who kind of set the foundation for what we see presently. So a lot of these guys were all rapping. Lux was around too, but they used to call them pop. But a lot of these guys were out rapping and battling and pulling up on people's blocks to get their names up. And their names were shooting all over the city. And then the people from the music industry will come uptown, grab them, take them into the studio, you know, try to make songs with them and work with them. And that's how dudes was getting their name up so that they could have an opportunity to cut a demo with a popular production company or a producer. So that was really the origin of guys battling, 
without music, you know? Yeah. And then as it as they were rapping without music and it began to become a thing where dudes are coming to your block, everybody would be writing in an attempt to be prepared so that when somebody pulled up on their block, they had enough rhymes to battle them and they would just rap until it was over. And then yeah. that's kind of like where you get guys like Freeway battling um, Cassidy in the studio because like you would go like P. Diddy, you know, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever. He had a restaurant called Justin's and Justin's used to be like on um, 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. So it was popping, like all the rappers were being in there, the R&B singers would come through and it was a soul food spot. So outside of Justin's, people would be in the parking lots, rapping, battling, spitting rhymes, or they would go up by um, Diddy's studio, which is that, which is, they used to call Daddy's house or whatever. And that's where the infamous battle between Jay Mills and Cy Castle took place that Smack was able to capture. You know what I mean? That became a legendary battle for Jay Mills on the Smack DVD. So these little hotbeds and areas where the big studios were, were places where the MCs would congregate and they would just battle outside with no music. So, you know, people would be like, y'all got my man, he's dumb nice, I'm gonna bring him over. He's gonna battle your man or whatever the case, or bring him to the studio and let's battle. So that's kind of like- People how. used to actually bet money though. Like, let's talk about right. like, you know what I mean? This was like an underground, like gambling type of a situation when you had like the big homie of your block and another big homie for somebody else's block that got a man that spit that they felt that was nice. Yo, bring your man through. I'm telling you, he can't mess with my dude. And you know what I'm saying? We used to like, you know what I mean? Set up battles where, you know what I mean? They'll bring like 20,000 and you know what I'm saying? Basically really just throw that type of money on the line and have these dudes spit like, you know, 10 rounds of rap. And you know what I'm saying? The crowd that's out there will actually judge on who won. And you know what I mean? They used to really pay their bread. But talking about all that, like, you know what I'm saying? Let's get into a clip of those early days, you know what I'm saying? With the Jay Mills and, 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 and you know, the side cash bills and all that. Let's get into like a little Jay Mills clip real quick so they could get a feel of like what we talking about. Just so, you know what I mean? We could actually, you know what I mean? Show where we really like where this, where this whole culture started from. No, we're live. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you just saw, was what I what, what was what, what is what we were describing previously, like places where MCs would meet, battle to get their names up, and as you see in the clip, P Diddy was there because that took place in front of the studio. So you know these kind of battles are being set up more so in places where like um people who own production companies like Bad Boy, like Rough Rider, like um DTP, which is Ludacris's company, or you know. Wherever these types of environments were, where there was big studio sessions or restaurants or places where like exec music executives and um, you know producers and or big you know you know or mainstream rappers would be, these battles would happen, and this is how guys kind of built relationships and got their names up from battling. So that's kind of like what the wave was at that time. So you know. You know, that's when uh, Smack was around, you know, so we were out, we were interviewing people. And then at that moment is when um, we began to, like, capture these moments. You know what I mean? These moments were crazy moments. We began to capture these moments and uh, Smack took, the, took them and put them on a DVD. And, um, you know, at first we didn't think that it was going to have the impact that it did. You know, because on these DVDs, we would have Eminem, The Game, you know, Kanye West, um, everybody that was out at the time, all the big yeah. rap stars, you know what I'm saying? So this was just another feature that was on the DVD. But this is a feature, but this was, this. let's talk about, but this was a feature that was, we felt that was necessary to be on a DVD. Like, you know, like I don't want to under, undermine or under, under like, you right. know, underrepresent what this culture meant to us at that time. That's right. why we showcased it and put it on the platform so, you know, it could get the proper respect and a proper exposure that we felt that it deserved for the world to appreciate this art form. You understand what I'm saying? That's why, like, you know, we really, like, you know what I'm saying, felt necessary to, like, you know, really, like, give it its own unique spot on that 
Smack DVD platform where everybody could realize and recognize every time they buy or purchase a Smack DVD where they could actually find this content. But go ahead, B. Right. So I think like that was <clears throat> that was a turning point for battle rap. You know, like after that battle drop with Murder Mook and um and Jay Mills, like rhyming over beats became antiquated. Like it was over. Like no more. Like you didn't see it anymore. There was no need to watch that. That the whole style changed. And that just became the way that people did battles. And you know, you would still see like 106 in part and they would do battles with music, but Remember, we are always ahead of what's going on. So they were kind of late in those battles. You know, we were kind of setting the mark of how battles would be. And then soon thereafter, you know, the influence spread. And then you have the birth of Fight Club. You know what I mean? And they started to do battles. You know what I'm saying? After seeing what was going on on the Smack DVDs, you know, we influenced them. And, you know, they did a great job and they created their own spin with the pool table in the 60 seconds. And their rule set, but the whole influence of, of how we presented it kind of set off a whole vibe for others to, to do the same. And there were other DVDs that came along and other battles that came along. But I think that um, us capturing it the way that we did and Smack shooting it the way that he did, because back then he was shooting also and editing and doing all the technical stuff. Um, I think that's what kind of gave it the boost that it needed. And then from that point on, we never looked back. You know, we, we took a we took a small hiatus here and there, you know, and then, you know, you had the birth of the lines then. But like um, you know, we had already so, kind of let me yeah, all right. So um let me ask you a question, obese, because you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me because you know what I mean I just want to just like you know control you know the situation. I want to get some information out of you because you, you know what I'm saying you definitely like you know are breaking down like you know a, a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying. Right. So I'm gonna ask you to explain to the people like what is a punchline? What is a scheme for all the new rappers or all the new fans actually that you know what I'm saying or is just coming into the culture that 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 like the art form that that that's interested into like you know battle rap. Like explaining them what's a punchline, what's a scheme. What's a metaphor, like, you know, so they can get familiar with, you know, I mean, yeah, what's I a mean, rebuttal? I mean, it's, it's, it's really simple. Like in battle rap, a punchline is is almost, you know, equivalent to a joke. You know what I mean? When somebody tells you a joke and then they hit you with that final line that makes you laugh or you get everything that they were saying prior. It's that one line that makes you understand it. And oftentimes it's humorous. In battle rap, it's used as a weapon to kind of embarrass your opponent or, to, you know, to, to entertain the audience, you know, um, there's a myriad of different skill sets that you must possess to be a modern day battle MC. When you say um, rebuttals, you know, if you're rap if, if you're sitting there and the guy's rapping against you and it's his turn and he says something that makes the crowd go crazy. If at the end of the um, round, you can turn around and use his own thing against him and say something back that relates to what he said to you. We refer to that as a rebut. Um, schemes are when you take, you know, uh, let's say, for instance, you did a scheme about laundry detergent. You might name Tide, Downey, you know, uh, Clorox, whatever other, you know, laundry detergents they are. And then, you know, put it in rhyme form, but make it relate to the opponent. Like, you know, you got washed. You know, you couldn't swim because the tide was high. You know what I mean? Like you might use all of the laundry detergents to describe a situation against your opponent. So it's just a creative way, a creative play on words. Wow. You know? yeah, and I think a lot of these things have developed, huh? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, definitely, definitely. Go ahead, I'm listening. Yeah, a lot of these things have just continued to develop over the years. So it's like, I think once you really start to sit down and listen to battle rap, your ear gets trained to hear things quicker than you normally would. So like somebody with a battle rap ear can understand a lot of things that are taking place as opposed to a new viewer. They may be feeling the energy of what's going on on stage or the passion that comes from the artist, but they may not fully understand everything that's being said. 
if they're not in tune with the backstory or if they're not, if their ear isn't trained yet to know the metaphors, the similes and the rebuttals and the different um, skill sets that are required to be yeah. a skilled battle MC. Nah, that's dope, man. You know what I'm saying? We got some skill, you know what I mean? Artists that's in the chat right now. Shout out to Jay Black. Jay Black is coming down. He had 30 Bs right now. He had three OUBs, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he's, he's more Black. Listen, I don't even know. He's more than welcome like to that. top. He's, he's more than welcome to pop in and see if, if he's really about that life. You know listen, what I'm listen. saying? I already <laughs> killed him and sent his man Jagged J running to the mountains. He tried yeah. to set me up. I think he was in um, Cleveland one day. You know what I mean? And I just so happened to be a little bit out of character. You know what I mean? I had a drink or two. You know, I'm guilty. And, um, you know, they started rhyming. And I was just fooling about having a good... I destroyed the whole champion staff. Destroyed them. Killed them. And I don't even rap. I'm not trying to be an MC. I'm not trying to be a battler. My dream is just to make battle rap bigger. And I enjoy the real talented MCs. But, you know, Jay Black and the champion staff tried to approach me. You know what I mean? I'm still a hip hop guy at heart. So I, I stepped up and I destroyed him. It's on tape. You can look it up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He said he's in the gym right now. He's trying to look like his old videos or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, I, but shout out to Casey J. Shout out to Arsenal. I see you. They in the building too. You know what I mean? Shout out to Arsenal. all of, you know what I mean? Artists that's in the, in the chat room right now. You know what I'm saying? It's all love, man. But yo, um, Let's 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 take them back real quick, man. Let's get into like one of the like founding fathers of, of, of this battle rap culture as we know it, acapella style. Let's get into this T-Rex freestyle. Shout out to T-Rex, shout out to the whole dot mob. Um, yeah, let's 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 do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well. You ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was crazy, man. That just, that just yeah. brought me back, like, you know what I'm saying? Back in the days, you know what I'm saying? T-Rex, you know what I mean? In, 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 in the middle was, of Harlem. T-Rex you know what was I'm crazy. Saying? Like, I knew about T- What's crazy is I knew T-Rex before I knew Smack, which is wild. Um, T-Rex was on a tear at that time. Like, he was like, since he was like 15, 16, he was running around, rolling up on people's blocks, battling people really getting crazy you know what i mean i know we refer to that as a freestyle but there's different types of freestyles you know so just in case for the consumers that don't know you know you got freestyles which people refer to as coming up off the top of your head on the moment you know like if somebody says something and you're just rhyming about things that are actually happening in the battle or on stage or even or either if even if you're just rapping over a beat on the radio people refer to that as a freestyle you know, if you're coming up off the top of your head, but it also freestyles don't necessarily mean that you have to rhyme off the top of your head. It could just be some rhymes that are not connected to a song. So they call it, they refer to it as a freestyle. So sometimes guys just write raps that they just want to spit to entertain people and they refer to those as freestyles. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is a one-on-one show. So, you know, we just kind of breaking down some things. So if you're like, somebody who's really a battle rap fan. This is, this show is more so for the new fans, you know, who are coming on to the plat to the caffeine platform to watch battle rap and URL. Word. And then, you know what I'm saying? This show is also going to be airing every week with some of your favorite artists from like the battle rap culture, just to break down in details with certain subject of what, you know, battle rap is. So, you know, this is going to be a real dope addition to the whole URL caffeine platform. And I want y'all to definitely support it, man, because we want to just definitely educate, you know what I'm saying? All the new consumers that comes into the culture when it comes to this art form and what's it about and what it, um, what it details, you know? Uh, Yeah. And we got a lot of big events coming up. You know, we got the biggest weekend in rap coming up March 6th and March 7th with the super fight. 